We now return to Let's Play Shadowrun Hong Kong. Finally, time to take a mission. Your workstation and mission computer. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fills the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you that you have six unread messages. May as well check them. New messages. Welcome to Heiwei. Monk, on behalf of your friends at the Heiwei Chamber of Commerce and the Swift Winds Mahjong Parlor, I welcome you to the community of Heiwei and to our new business venture. I've already lined up three jobs for you. The details are contained in a separate computer message. Remember to check your messages often, as I will update you with new opportunities as they occur. Okay, your mission computer. From Isabel. Hey, Monk. I've set up your mission computer to automatically collect and collate new report, news reports, information, and media that might be of interest to you. Some of the keywords I've got it trolling for are things like Raymond, Duncan, Walled City, etc. I've also patched in a permanent link to the Hong Kong Shard of the Shadowlands BBS. It's a great place to connect with other runners, sell pay data, get news from the streets, and so on. Don't be shy about taking a look. I do have something, right? I think I can sell something. Resources from Strangler Bao, it looks like. I've been instructed to inform you of the various suppliers present in Heiwei. Andy Cheng has cultivated a commercial district of well-stocked and trustworthy vendors. Whoever you choose to do business with, you'll be in good hands. Ermin Ka Fai at Club 88 is an excellent resource for acquiring additional weapons, should you require any. If you are in need of magical supplies, go to the Parlor of Five Phases. If you desire training in the Path of the Adept, seek out Spider Shen. She can help you as well as supply you with any close quarters weapons you might desire. Chrome Alley can supply you with cybernetic enhancements and medical supplies. The proprietor, Ten Armed Ambrose, is a cyber surgeon of some repute. Law's Techno Palace is a Wampoan-run supplier of the local decking community. The place is hard to miss. Just look for a sign glowing in the sky. If you need drones, reliable Matthews Robot Bazaar is your best bet, and I pity you. Considering the disrespect that you seem content to casually spew, I would suggest you acquire a small arsenal. You are more than likely to need it. Serial Killer Kindly Cheng, I've got a problem, Monk, and you're going to help me solve it. I do a lot of business with the Wampoans. If you're not familiar with the term, I'll forgive you. You are an outsider after all. The Wampoans are a tribe of techno-fetishists and deckers who have taken up residence in the Wampoa Garden area of Hong Kong. They make and trade high-tech goods to people from all over the world. A lot of new yen passes through their pasty little fingers, and I make a lot of money brokering deals between them and the smugglers here in Heiwei. I've hit a snag, though. The Wampoan elders, their council of leaders, are being eliminated by a serial killer. They've asked me to dispatch someone to get to the bottom of it and stop the killings. And they're not taking their goods through my turf until I do. So you're going to be my proxy, dear. I don't care how you do it, but I need those murders stopped. The Wampoans have a delegate here in Heiwei by the name of Maximum Law. Speak with him if you wish to know about Wampoa. He's got a big mouth, but he knows very little of importance. Don't expect much from that half-empty bottle of vinegar. You get your ass down to Wampoa Garden and talk to the elders. Lie, cheat, and steal if you have to so long as they're convinced that there won't be any more murders. I want my cut back, and I want it soon. I'll take it. Good, I'll tell the elders you're coming. They don't like outsiders, and they might shoot at you if I don't warn them you'll be arriving. Okay. So, do I only get the one, then, or...? Forward, Artifact Liberation. Welcome to the Shadows, Monk. I've received a request from an archaeologist named Mr. Drake. He's interested in... Uh-oh. He's interested in liberating certain artifacts from beneath a manor house located in Tai Po. I've attached a copy of the video message that he sent me. Mr. Drake. The screen flickers a few times and the email is replaced with the face of a stern-looking orc. Hello, Madam Chang. I've heard that you're a woman who knows how to get things done, especially with regards to things that aren't legal in the strictest sense. That's exactly the kind of help I'm looking for. Recently, a rich investor by the name of Liu Hua decided to expand his manor house on the outskirts of Tai Po. Too much money, not enough space for fancy parties. He hit a snag with local government officials, however. They suspected the land his estate was built on may have pre-modern archaeological artifacts buried beneath it, all of them dating from the Song Dynasty. Consequently, I have contracted as an archaeologist to oversee the excavations and ensure everything was properly recorded and catalogued. Sure enough, we were only a few days into the excavation when we discovered a series of tombs lying beneath the site. The scope of the tombs is far beyond anything Liu or I expected. Several acres of catacombs, at least and untouched relics throughout. What's more, they're certainly older than the Song Dynasty. They may even be from a previous cycle of magic. Before I could take my report to the Free Enterprise Zone authorities, however, Liu called in his allies, the Tanqian Incorporated. Liu sold the entire site to Tanqian, 
who then leased it back to him. Because Tantian is considered to have extraterritoriality in Hong Kong, local authorities were powerless to stop Liu from looting the tombs. He immediately began building a museum, if you can call it that, atop the site. He had the gall to call this museum the Emperor's Tomb. Can you believe that? The odds of there being an actual Emperor buried there are basically nil, but he doesn't care. Anything to sell a few tickets. Liu has continued his excavations using Tantian contractors to expand the dig. What he didn't know is that I bugged his comlink before he fired me. Based on what I've heard, something strange is going on in the lower levels. Workers have been disappearing, only to be found dead several days later. Whatever is down there is too dangerous to be left in Liu's hands. Liu must have found my data line tap, though. I stopped receiving any information three days ago. The last thing I heard him talking about were a pair of ancient texts that workers had discovered. Then he issued an order that further excavation should be halted until he can secure the subterranean areas. I'm betting those texts are the cause of whatever's killing the workers. I have quite a bit of experience with these kinds of dangerous excavations, but an operation of this scale is beyond me. I need a team that's tough enough to get in and survive, aren't afraid of making a mess, and who can get out with the books and whatever else they can carry. Beyond the two texts, I'm willing to pay very well for whatever other artifacts your team can liberate. The more valuable, the better. Don't worry. They'll be going to actual museums, not some rich playboy's mansion. <coughs> I've got a second program in place that'll suppress Liu's security system. The team will have to be careful, though. There are only so many alarms I can suppress. Go beyond that number and I'll scrub the mission. I've included a catalog of likely items to help the team appraise the most valuable ones. They don't need to be subtle. In fact, I'd prefer they make it look like a common robbery. Tell them to smash and grab what they can. Let me know when you find a suitable group of Shadowrunners. There you have it. Nice and simple robbery. Do you think you can handle something that basic, dear? I have faith in you. Let me know when you're ready to proceed. I'll contact Mr. Drake when you're on your way. Yep. Excellent. I've attached directions to Liu's estate in the message. Good luck and don't fuck it up. Okay. May as well take the other one too. Geomantic Sabotage. Geomancy is big business in the Free Enterprise Zone. Here in Hong Kong, Peng Shui isn't just the act of rearranging your kitchen to make things look pretty. The fortunes of empires rise and fall with the ebb and flow of qi, and sometimes that flow needs a helping hand. Wuxing Incorporated are the preeminent practitioners of large-scale qi manipulation here in the Free Enterprise Zone. They've gone to great lengths to channel qi from all over Hong Kong into their headquarters, an enormous monstrosity that they call Wuxing Tower. There, it is focused and transformed into good fortune through the building's geomantically attuned architecture and interior decoration. Our client believes it is time for Wu Qing's good luck to run out. You are to infiltrate the Sky Tower and disrupt the flow of qi throughout the building, but you are to do so in two distinct fashions. First, you must disrupt the feng shui of the offices by subtly altering the environment of that level. This will consist of minor adjustments of desks, spilled water, and other small activities that are unlikely to be noticed. Ordinarily, even subtle disturbances of this nature would be noticed. This is why the client wishes you to make a much louder demonstration on the rooftop garden. The garden is to be ransacked, utterly destroyed, set fire to things, uproot trees, that kind of thing. Our client has also specified he would like you to destroy the large Buddhist statue in the garden, smash the thing to bits and leave them scattered across the rooftop. This level of destruction will keep Wu Xing's geomancers busy long enough the more subtle disruptions below will take effect. In addition, it will send the kind of message our client would like Wu Xing to hear. I have utmost faith in your ability to cause destruction. The more disruption you cause on both levels of the Sky Tower, the happier the client will be. Given your own skills with magic, you should have an easy time identifying the most effective ways to disrupt the chi of the building. Let's go. Good. Contact me when you finish the job, and I'll send you your cut of the payment. All right. Old messages, jobs directory, access the Shadowlands BBS. Connection established. Search for relevant keywords. Uh, missed connections? You, rappelling down the side of an unnamed luxury hotel in a ball gown on Monday night. Me, admiring the view from the 28th floor urinals during a private soiree of an unnamed corporation that I was infiltrating. Our eyes met briefly before you dropped out of sight. Your long, dark hair had come loose from your chick tongue, <laughs> framing your beautiful, flushed face. <laughs> I will never forget it. You were carrying a duffel bag bulging with stolen prototype weaponry. Well, I filched the intel that goes with it. Can we connect? Blackjack. Very funny, Blackjack. I'm sorry the job went sideways. I got trapped and had only one way out. Red Queen. We were supposed to have each other's backs. Just wait till you hear the way out that I had to take. Gotta lay low for now. Why are we posting about this on a public message board? That's funny. Terrorists in Hong Kong. Been hearing some buzz about some mainlander terrorists that showed up in Victoria Harbor and had a shootout with the HKPF the other day. Anyone heard anything on that? Ming Pao said there were four of them that got away. One human, two orcs, and a dwarf. A troll, an elf, and a human were all killed on the scene. 
Word that is that they're members of the White Star out of Hainan, coming here to start trouble against the Executive Council. Looks like there's a 50,000 new yen reward for any information leading to their capture. The HKPF seem pretty nervous about letting these bastards walk freely around the streets. Think they'd actually pay out to somebody like us? Not a chance. You walk in there to claim the reward, you're getting thrown in a hole with them. The HKPF doesn't keep promises to the sinless. Couldn't hurt to try. Why'd you have to be such a downer? Because I know the police. They're all dirty. They're only in it to protect their paychecks, and they don't give a damn about anyone else. Believe me, I'm just looking out for your best interests. Like you and your triad looked out for my brother? You know he's still paying for his reconstructive surgery, you bastard. If a man wants to keep his teeth, he should pay what he owes rather than pull a gun on me. Simple as that. Okay, fun. Poetry Slam! Ladies and gentlemen, poets and shadowrunners, welcome to the first annual Shadowland Poetry Slam. There are no rules and there are no prizes, except bragging rights. Without further ado, let the versification begin! How long do you think we can keep this going before the trolls show up or a sysadmin shuts us down? Why would they shut us down? It's a free board. We can be poetic if we want to. Just trust me, it happens. For some reason, these things always draw the worst sort of attention. Are you going to give us a poem, or are you going to stand around complaining about why you can't? All right, I've got one. Wait for it. Synth muscle, smart links, neural boosters, cyber limbs, all fall to grenades. A little musing on the transience of life in the shadows. Very nice, sir. When the long shadows fall on Hong Kong, neon lights pierce the coming night. Tread with me the velvet blackness. Let no lamp shine on our deeds. That one's entitled Our Hour. That might just have been the most pompous thing I've ever read. Try this one on for size. Lasers are red, shadows are black, with Matt on the street. You'd best watch your back. My poem wasn't pompous, you uncultivated rube. It was an homage to Wang Wei, the famous Tang Dynasty master of poetry. It's traditional, unlike that ridiculous limerick that you posted. Now, now, I don't think you have to take the word slam quite so literally. Hey, you people know the rules. Poetry slams have been out of bounds on this BBS since the Laughing Man debacle of 55. If you want to sling your fancy words, do it on a different forum. I'm shutting this thread down. I told you. Walled City. This could be important. I've got a courier job next week that's supposed to take me into the Walled City. I'm from Kuala Lumpur and I've never been to Hong Kong, but I hear this place is dangerous as hell. Is there anything I should know of? Oh, you've got nothing to worry about. It's just a low-cost housing development full of hard-working people. Here, take a look at this news report. Newscaster, a short trid clip begins playing. This is Sunny Chuang of Horizon News. On today's sunny side up, the Kowloon Walled City, a blight on the free enterprise zone, or low-cost housing for the economically disadvantaged. We'll introduce you to some of the hard-working residents, how they live, and how they contribute to the growth and prosperity of our city. The montage sequence begins showcasing the destitute poor of the walled city going about their daily lives. The shots have been carefully chosen, showing only smiling and productive residents, a stark contrast to our own experience inside it. Many residents of Hong Kong regard the walled city as a place of no return. To outsiders, it's the last stop on a long road to homelessness. Rumors abound of feral ghouls, unsafe living conditions, and triad extortion. Yet when we went there, the reality was far different. What we saw will shock you, citizens of Hong Kong working and living just like the rest of us. Their apartments are smaller and their shops more modest, but the people who live there wouldn't be out of place anywhere in the Fez. Citizens like shoemaker Chow Sang Tsui. The scene cuts to an elderly man in a closet-sized stall filled with shoemaking equipment. He smiles broadly at the camera. Oh, I love it here. We have a community, you know? We're like family. Maybe we don't have as nice a view as they do in Repulse Bay, but I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's not paradise, no, but it's my home. I grew up here. How could I possibly leave? The camera shifts back to Sunny Chuang, who now stands in front of one of the entrances to the Walled City. Contrary to popular opinion, the Walled City serves as a vital function. The poor and downtrodden find a home in the Walled City, a community where they have a voice, can work, and even prosper. Far from being the eyesore that the video suddenly stutters, freezes, and ends. Okay, I've decided to cut the rest of that crap. She keeps going on about what a good place the Walled City is and how we all need it. Don't buy any of it. It may not be hell, but you can see it from there. Freedom Cowboy's just trying to get you in trouble. Hey, it's Isabel. So how do you know the real story? Because I grew up there. You know what it's really like? It's eating old broth made from rat bones because there's nothing else. It's watching your neighbors sell their five-year-old son to organ leggers so they don't have to starve to death. When you die in the walled city, your neighbors cheer because they get the clothes off your back. I wouldn't wish the walled city on my worst enemy. Okay. Pay data. Attach the data to escrow account. Data will be automatically sold to the highest bidder. Both parties will remain anonymous throughout the transaction. Post the exotic animal dealer contact. Yay. Okay, I think we're done. So, we have some objectives. But first, 
We'd better get kitted out. Now I need to find out where all these things are. Gin? Uh, parlor of five phases. Hey, this is great. This is actually where I need to be. Uh, you. Crafty shoe. A mild scent, sweet and slightly herbal, is the first thing you notice upon entering the old shop. Its quarters are cramped, made smaller by the display cases and furniture packed inside. The walls are lined with bookshelves, and the tables and chairs are stacked with old tomes. A few titles jump out at you. Lucid Dreaming, an exploration of the inner self. Dream logic, nocturnal visitations. Overall, the place feels lived in, if disorganized. Not quite cluttered, but close. Milling at the front of the store is the shopkeeper, lost in a book of her own. She's tall for a human, probably close to two meters in height. Her physique is typically bookworm, not overweight, but you can't see any muscular definition either. A wraparound tattoo covers her upper arms and shoulders, but from where you're standing, you can't quite make it out. She fidgets. Gradually, her eyes rise from her book and lock onto you. Welcome. Don't believe I've seen you before? She sets down her book and sweeps a strand of black and pink hair behind her ear. Name's Crafty. Monk, nice to meet you. She shakes your hand. Her grip is surprisingly firm. So, Monk, what can I do for you? I've got spells, alchemical reagents, foci, whatever you want, really. Might have to do some digging to find it, but if it's magical, it's around here somewhere. Have you had any vivid dreams lately? Her face is unreadable. Her eyes lock onto yours. As a matter of fact, I have, Monk. But we all get the occasional vivid dream. Nothing special there. Gesture to the books on the tabletop. Really? And why are you reading up on them? She flicks her wrist dismissively. Sure, it's a little weird that we're having them. But these types of dreams are common in the walled city. Nothing to get all worked up about, probably. Strange. I met someone the other day who said that, too. She nods. Anyone who's familiar with the walled city would know that. But most people don't go out of their way to find out. My mother devoted her life to researching the walled city and the magical phenomena within it. So I grew up with stories about the city, the recurrent, creepy dreams being one of them. They're common, then? Common as the cold. My mother devoted her life to researching the walled city and the magical phenomenon within it. So I grew up with stories about the city, the recurrent, creepy dreams being one of them. I've never been inside the walled city myself, but Mom went in pretty regularly and experienced the dreams. Your mom sounds like an interesting person. The side of her mouths dip into a shallow frown. Sure. She was interesting, but not praiseworthy. What else do you know about the walled city? Very little, just that my mother spent most of her time in there, and she... She shifts her weight, leans on the counter. Well, it messed her up. Is there something specific you want to know about? What can you tell me about the city? Where to begin? The walled city has always been a hellhole. It started as a bad place. It's still a bad place. Crime's drawn to it like a magnet, and you can't enter the city without a security guard on each elbow. Not... But not even that will guarantee you safe passage. No one famous or rich or memorable has ever come from the place, and the only thing it's known for around here is its shitty reputation. It's about the gist of it. Now, there's a whole library here that just so happens to be the foremost location for Walled City text. I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. Tell me about yourself, Crafty. I'm not sure where to start. What do you want to know? Your mother sounds like quite the mage. Did you study magic too? I sure did. Natural predisposition, or whatever. But Mom and I learned the craft differently. I went to a university, and she was book taught. Mom was very old school. Her magic wasn't as applicable to everyday situations, and it was rooted in superstitions. It still worked, and well, but only for more ritualistic, ancient spells. Practical spells like rain shields and bottomless trash cans were outside of her repertoire. Is Crafty really your first name? No, of course not, idiot. Why would you ask that? The name started out as a joke, actually. Back home, my mom used to call me Crafty, since the meaning is similar to my given name. I liked it because of the way it sounds. I insisted my family call me Crafty, so it became a sort of nickname around the house. When I got older and started school in Hong Kong, I made my mom register me as Crafty, and it stuck. Let me guess, your first name is Phyllis. Yes. No way, I was just joking. Her act chatters as you see her struggling to hold back a smile. Ha ha, very funny, look how amused I am. The temptation was too great. Anyway, name's Meow. No cat jokes. I mean it. Now, where were we? Uh, let's just go back on topic. I want to see your wares. Is that what we're calling it? Shamanistic... Oh, is this not for me? Didn't I... Who's the one that I can get the... Yeah, none of this is for me. Damn it all. Okay. Anything else? Nope, thanks. See you around. All right. Jesus Christ, there is just way too much text in this game, and we will never, never end if I stop and go through all the dialogue. 
Uh, I don't want to stop with you. I want to stop with the frickin' teacher who can teach me better things. Reliable Matthew has maybe some goods, but you're not... You're not the person. Smooth jazz drifts from cheap speakers on this barge. A wide array of worn-down drones litter the battered deck. Most are util... Okay, this is the d drone guy. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'll go now. Okay. Maybe I'll come back and talk to these guys later at some point when we need to, but Jesus Christ. Another episode of nothing happening. Where is... Wouldn't be up there. Maximum Law, that's the guy we kind of need to talk to to get some clues about something. But what I'm actually looking for instead... The intercom. Is this maybe the right one? Okay, you again. I thought I told you to fuck off. Kindly will vouch for me. Yeah? You just idle your engine there for a minute and I'll check on that. There's a long silence on the intercom. The door gives heavy metallic clicks. There's a dull rumble like heavy bolts sliding back. A green light flashes on the terminal. The door appears to be unlocked. You can enter the clinic. Oh, this is the clinic. I don't want to enter the clinic. Damn it! I want to find a teacher who can teach me some spells. You're not the mystic, are you? I wish you would run faster. Shider... Shider Spen, yes. Spider Shen! This is the guy. This is the guy. You. Despite the wind and rain pelting Hayoi, the proprietor of his stall, a monk, judging by their outfit, is unconcerned. The monk's expression is indifferent, though hardly placid or serene. Muscles show as tightly wound metal bands beneath the skin, ready to snap in any direction without warning. What's more, the monk's robes are anything but ordinary. Certainly, silk makes up the base outfit but it's paired with high-impact ballistic armor, heavy-duty boots, and a bandolier of throwing knives. The table in front of you is arrayed with a wide variety of melee weapons, charms, jade pendants, and other mystical accoutrements. Beneath an awning in the rear are rows upon rows of cages, each housing some variety of exotic reptile or insect. These, in turn, are flanked by jars and boxes of Chinese herbs, incense, powders, and inks. The monk spares you only the shortest of glances as you approach. I am Monk Shen. Most people in Hue call me Spider Shen, on account of the spiders back there. You're not local, not by a long shot. It's a definitely a statement, not a question. Yeah, what about it? Shen shrugs and swings an open palm across the table in front of you. So you probably have more reason to buy something than my neighbors, and I'm here to sell, so that's good. Swords, knives, clubs, I sell it all. I make most of these, but if I can't, I've got friends who can. If you need incense or salves for meditation, I make and sell those too. And if your joints ache, I can give you acupuncture. Shen places both palms on the table, leaning over it towards you with a wicked grin. So what can I show you? Let me take a look at your wares. So, street monk outfit. That's armor three. What have I currently got? Am I not wearing anything? I think I've got one, so I'll buy those for sure. Uh, physical Adept. Passive! Medium cover bonus to magic spells. I'll take that too. I have throwing weapons I could buy. That might come in handy. Physical Adept. Attack. Nerve Strike. Attack that does low damage but slows the target, reduces their aim. It only helps if I can get up close and personal. Powerful Magical Punch that pierces armor. Take that too. Okay. Uh, yeah... Nerve strike. Can I... I don't even think I have that unlocked. Yeah, chi casting three. So, we'll just buy these. And I'll swap this out. Good. Now I've got some armor on me. Thank God. Uh, spells. We need to get these. Oh, they are. Good. Automatically. So I can only have four, it looks like. Speaking of character, uh, you sell snakes and spiders too? No, they're mine. I can sell you things I craft with my hands or the things I can do, but the medicines and poisons I make are my secret. You want those, you apprentice to me. In five years, maybe I show you how to make a poultice, eh? They're that secret? Of course they're secret. 
These are what set me apart from the rest of the street dealers in Hanoi. You want cram or bliss? Any two-bit triad punk can make that for you. But I can realign your chi, set your yin and yang in balance, or set somebody else's out of balance with a few drops. To master my skills, you need to learn for years. It's not just following a formula. You want to learn, you need patience. You try to learn without patience, all you do is ape the masters. Shen snaps two fingers and points at the cages. You have to understand them to truly learn my art, otherwise you'd never become a master. Might as well get a skill soft. Alright, that's all for now. I don't need to talk to you and learn your, your fancy backstory. Because I have got some karma to spend. I said, I've got some karma to spend. Why does it take so long to load that? Okay. Learning some dodge would be good. I think we need to get to uh, some chi casting. So now I've got this that I can eventually get. Um, is this even worth putting in? I don't think it is. Because what does it do? It's hermetic magic, and I don't use hermetic magic. I just wanted the ability to... Oh, but if I unlock more spellbook stuff, right? Then I can have more? Let's find something else to do with those four points right now, though. Like close combat. That unlocks Overwatch, but uh, what I really need it to do is just increase skills at... Uh, well, wait a minute, maybe it doesn't even do anything. Increase the chance to hit, but I'm not really suffering from that right now. Maybe instead I should put four into quickness so I can dodge a little bit better. Let's not, let's not spread ourselves too thin there. If I do this, I can get the uh, roundhouse kick and eventually get to stripping some armor off. That might be nice. Disarming would also be cool. Let's continue on close combat then. Go. Okay. Well, I have a few new spells. That's great. Um, I guess I could buy some things and then I think we can trade them in when I do like the stash and stuff. Eventually we can talk to people about their their lives and crap, but oh my god. I don't remember there ever being this much backstory in the previous games. Like it, it's it's all just this is basically an action novel is what we're playing here. I'm going to end this one here. And when we come back, we'll tackle one of these missions. I guess I'm going to be given a choice here, but I don't know which one. Okay. I'll end it here and see you next time.